Okay. Now, this is not a compositionally beautiful shot, but let's say this were the gorgeous shot that you wanted to take. What is it that you're going to expose for? I mean, if you throw your camera into matrix metering, metering you've got about 75% of the shot over here that is uh, going to be the basis for exposure. So you're going to have complete loss of all detail. Say, what was ever on this uh, headstone right here was incredibly important. I mean, what is it that you plan on exposing for? You have to dominate your camera. I mean, a lot of you people have asked me recently about going to, you know, to uh, uh, taking classes on photography, uh, you know, some of your local schools and whatnot. What do you think they're going to teach you? They can't teach you skills in composition. I mean, you can learn them and you can be imitative. You can be a mimetic uh, presence, you know, uh, of copying uh, the compositional artwork of others and then hopefully you'll develop it as your own. Some people actually never get out of that. and they become successful photographers so you can't learn the compositional skills you certainly can learn the skills in light manipulation but when you're encountered with a situation like this say you you've got a Nikon uh, let's just assume you do not have a pop-up flash okay otherwise you're going to use a fill flash and try to even out the seat everybody is so incredibly obsessed with dynamic range I mean I get so sick of hearing about dynamic range and bokeh 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 dynamic range dynamic range what makes you think that this shot is compositionally ugly if I can't see the, the headstone up here? Now, if that's what you're going for and you don't get it, then obviously you've made a mistake. But that's because you don't know how to dominate or use your camera properly. Obviously, as I've told you, you need to get into program mode. But you need to start spot metering. Okay, let's assume you got an Nikon uh, a D3 with you, and it has you left your speed light at home, so you've got no fill flash, you got no reflector, uh, you're limited because there's a gate right here, so you can't get any closer to this headstone. So what are you going to do? You know, you've got uh, you've got uh, six plus stops uh, between uh, the uh, the shiny side of uh, this uh, pink granite. Uh, headstone over here and uh, the face of uh, this uh, headstone right here. So what is it that you're going to expose for? Okay, part of light manipulation is not only using fill flash and reflectors and gels and ND filters and the rest of it, but you are limited on some things. Obviously you need to pack as much gear as you can, but never more than what you need. But if you don't have it with you, what can you do as so far as that space between your ears which makes up the skills that you either have or are trying to develop that lets you know what to expose for so what are you going to do in a situation like this well what do you plan on exposing for you plan on leaving this dark and having this uh, of course this this is not a, to me is not a beautiful picture but I'm only using this as an example say you want to expose for this headstone and your, your, your notion of compositional beauty is that everything over here, if it's blacked out and you can't see it, who gives a damn? And that's perfectly valid. You know, I can't, st a lot of the dynamic, uh, high dynamic range shots using multiple exposures are beautiful, but they're also fake. But I mean, all photography is fake to a certain extent. Some, you know, some obviously much more than others, either uh, in camera or in post-processing. But, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, a part of the philosophy of photography that we can discuss and talk about forever but what is it that you're going to expose for do you know immediately what to do and uh, do you have the confidence enough to throw your camera in spot metering and say well I'm gonna either take uh, the medium between these two so I don't blow out my highlights on this side of the pink granite so I'm gonna spot meter for right here, right over top of where I have my finger. Therefore, I'll have some of the detail that I can actually bring out on this headstone later in post, and I won't uh, blow up my highlights there. So I can spot meter right here. I got a near perfect 18% gray right here. Okay, between here and here and here and here, I got about three and a half stops. So I got three and a half stops between here and here, and I got about three and a half stops between here and here. Actually, it's about four between here and here. So now you have to ask yourself compositionally what do you want obviously blown highlights I mean if you want to blow out a picture it's you know it works for some things uh, and for not for much however um, it's basically unacceptable and it's ugly to the eyes now there's some things where it is acceptable and uh, it makes beautiful shots but 
the spectrum of where that is good is actually quite narrow. So what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to use a half and half ND filter? Okay, you didn't bring one with you. You're going to either have to recompose, you have to spot meter for here and cut this out later in a crop, or you can split the difference, or what are the other options? What is it that your, your camera's an idiot? I don't care how expensive your camera, you need to be thinking. But one of the things you learn in a language translation that also applies to photography is that you can't be thinking, but it, you can't put anything between yourself and the shot you're trying to take. When your camera is between you and the shot, then what you end up with is you're constantly fighting your camera rather than concentrating on the composition and the light manipulation of the shot you're trying to take. So you have to eliminate the camera. So once you've eliminated the camera and you become a master of the camera, then you need to become a master of light manipulation. So the camera becomes irrelevant. It becomes like muscle memory, an extension of your own body. But now you have to eliminate something else. Now you have to make an imminent compositional choice within your own head what it is you want to expose for, how you're going to do it, and it has to be an instantaneous afterthought. It has to be uh, a subliminal uh, process in your mind that you immediately know what it is you're going to do. When I come up to this shot, I'm going to split the difference. Although this isn't a shot I'm going to take, I'm going to split the difference between the two, or I'm going to actually spot meter for this headstone and crop this out or uh, alter it in post if it's a really important shot. So, you always need to be thinking about that, but you need to be thinking about it to the point where you forget about it. And so, until you forget about it, it's going to be something between you and the shot. Right now, you got your camera between, depending on how good you are in understanding how to manipulate and be a master of your camera, your DSLR. Your camera is always you're, you're always looking at the shot, but uh, between the fingers of your camera, you're, you're you're constantly fighting your camera. But once you get that out of the way, you've got another hand to worry about, and that is what it is you're exposing for. In photography, I like to really keep things very simple. There's only two things between what your eyes see out here and get grabbing the shot. One is your camera. Okay, you need to dominate your camera and know how to use it, and you have to know how the exposure is going to come out. The second thing is you have to worry about what it is you're exposing for. That is a compositional choice in your dynamic range, on, uh, on, on the choice of how you plan on cropping it, or, uh, or changing it in post-processing. But once you can remove your camera, and once you remove uh, the hindrance that you have in understanding what it is you're exposing for, when you've got complex situations like this, or you've got too much, many, every situation, I mean, this is one of the complex ones. You've got you know, some serious, you got a serious spread between your shadows and your highlights over here. So what are you going to expose for? Are you going to take, take care of it in crop? Are you going to take care of it in post? Are you going to split the difference? And once you actually make that a subconscious decision based upon, you know, the way that you actually see the world and what you want to, you have to immediately take what is in your mind and put it on the SD card of the compact flash card. Once you can do that, and the camera and uh, the, the thought and the forethought and the mental processing is eliminated, you've eliminated those two, then your photography, you know, it just opens up and things just roll and uh, you know it, you become a lot happier shooter I mean it's it's fun to go out instead of you go home and you look at your shots and you even see them on the back of your LCD you know what they're like but you know they didn't come out quite the way you, you anticipated so a lot of that frustration is gone um, so anyway just just start working on that there's no need to uh, take these the principles of photography are really rudimentary and you know you can really make things simple or you can make them complicated and I do not like to make things complicated now I do repeat myself too much obviously so but you know I do like to keep things very simplex and that's what you need to do as well so anyway it's uh, me from uh, the Lexington Cemetery and I'll catch you later bye